Supervisor Okonowski. Here. Assessor Marianne. Here. Thank you. All right. First order of business is a public hearing regarding proposed local law number two. Um, did everyone get a copy? Oh, I had a copy. You had a copy. Local law number two, 2004. This is a proposed law, uh, local law number two, which amending the sliding scale for ages real property tax exemption. First of all, before I forget, I'll ask Ruth to read the legal notice. Notice of public hearing, Town of Granby. Notice is hereby given that the Town Board of the Town of Granby will hold a public hearing on the ninth day of June, 2004, at 7 p.m. The Town Hall of the Town of Granby at 820 County Route 8, Fulton, New York, to hear public comment for those favoring or those opposed to proposed local law number 2, 2004. Said local law would create a revised sliding income scale for age exemptions to match the Oswego County sliding scale. By order of Granby Town Board, Ruth Sheldon, Town Clerk, dated April 14th, and it was published in the June 3rd Valley News. Okay, just a little explanation. Um, this is real, This is not a new law. This is something we've had for many, many years. It's something that uh, uh, all the school districts have a similar law. The county has a similar law, and it gives some relief to senior citizens who have lower incomes. The only thing this law is doing is amending the sliding scale to make it consistent with the county's sliding scale. And what it amounts to is a difference of $500 in each bracket. If you look at the scale, uh, Let's see if I can explain what we had before. Where it says 16,025 to 17,025, uh, it would now be up to 17,525. So it's, it changes the bracket slightly. Most people will not even be affected by it. A few people, and, and Mary Ann did some figures, and I did some figures, um, uh, it will be, uh, be a few more dollars or a, a small tax break. I think it was, it was only 7 to 10 actual people that it was actually going to affect. Be, yeah, okay. But someone brought, brought it to our attention uh, some months ago that because of inflation, those people who have every year been getting it, maybe all of a sudden can't get it, only because of inflation. The other advantage of doing this is it makes the job of the assessor a little bit easier because they're working with one sliding scale for both the town and the county. So, with that said, anyone who would like to speak about this local law, please come forward. I didn't think it was going to be a controversial one. Um, I guess no one, no one wants to speak at all. 
Okay, would you like to adjourn the public hearing? <coughs> Motion we adjourn. No, second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> okay. We'll set that aside for just a few minutes. Not very long. Um, and <coughs> begin our regular monthly meeting. First of all, a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting <coughs> and to accept them as written. I make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. We're the regular work meeting, we had two uh, interview meetings, which were executive session, and then uh, the last regular meeting, so a total of four different minutes meeting since our last time. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Just a couple of announcements. Um, I'm sure you followed in the paper the information about Lake Neatawanta. Uh, today's announcement in the paper said that fishing is allowed and boating, but not swimming or not, should not be in the water or have the pets in the water. Is that correct? correct. The one thing I did want to bring to your attention, because I'm quite proud, is that uh, that afternoon, it was a Tuesday, uh, when we first heard about it, Dave Edwards here gathered together some firemen from both fire departments and we felt it was necessary to notify the people who lived in Granby people who lived along the uh, or had property or access to the lake just in case because we know that there's people that go ho horseback riding down there and and people take their dog down there and so forth so we wanted to get the word out just as quickly as possible and Dave uh, uh, got together a crew of people from both Cody Fire Department and Grammy Center Fire Department. Uh, would you like to speak more, Jeff? Um, Jeff Buck in the back. Jeff took the lead for Grammy Center. <clears throat> but uh, within about an hour, hour and a half, I think we had everybody, uh, we went door to door, hit every household, and uh, gave everybody a letter, uh, explained to them what was going on, asked them, because a lot of times people go through the yards to go fishing. We tried to get it done before kids got off the school buses. Uh -huh because um, when the kids get home we always head for the lake so it was our main concern was to try and get them uh, in tune with what was going on but it was very successful at that time we really didn't know how much of the lake was affected no uh, and no. so forth so better to caution uh, to err on the side of caution i i got one i'm frank box i got one on my door and i think it was an excellent idea david and i congratulate mm -hmm. you for well, that's, that was my point, is uh, to congratulate you, to thank you and congratulate you and the two fire departments. And uh, I can send a letter to each department for, for that little That'd be nice, because Granby really, really had a lot more of a territory. And okay. That'd be nice. It's, a, it's quite a long stretch, mm -hmm. because it was all the way, you know, good Lakeshore Road, uh, a good stretch of County Route 8 and then County Route 3. And uh, so it took them a while. Uh, I lost, uh, I mentioned, I think, at a previous meeting that uh, Brett Johnson was receiving an Eagle Scout Award. Uh, I went to the ceremony Sunday. It was a very nice ceremony. His parents have a right to be very, very proud. He's also graduating from high school this year, but uh, um, we are very proud to have a Granby person to achieve this high honor. And uh, also one is who is kind of part of the Granby family because his father works here at the highway department. Okay, let's go back to local law number two. I have a resolution ready. Who would like to have the honors? It's an easy one, Carol. Pardon me? Whereas it has been proposed the town of Granby adopt a local law amending local law number two of 1997 providing a sliding scale for aged real property tax exemptions. <clears throat> and whereas a public hearing was held on June 9, 2004, at 7 o'clock p.m. before the town board to obtain comment from the residents of the town regarding the proposal. And whereas the town board has determined that enacting a local law, amending local law number two of 1997, providing a sliding scale for aged real property tax exemptions in the town would be in the best interest of the town. Now it is hereby resolved that the Town of Granby Town Board adopts Local Law Number 2 of 2004, amending Local Law Number 2 of 1997, 
providing a sliding scale for aged real property tax exemptions in the town of Granby. Thank you. I'll second it. Okay. <coughs> we all know, well, understand what this yep. is all about. Bruce, would you please call the roll? Councillor Edwards? Yes. Councillor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councillor Haggerty? Yes. Councillor Abbott? Yes. Okay. Another very important item of mm -hmm. uh, old business. We have, as all of you, I think, know, we have uh, passed the local law that, which was local law number one, that created the position of sole assessor effective July 1st. We have uh, advertised for the position. We, did, we interviewed some people, and we have made a decision. There's one person whose credentials stood out far above the others, I think I can dare say, and uh, we're very excited to, to be able to appoint David Roach as the sole assessor. David is with us tonight. Um, I have put that in resolution. I put it in two resolutions, so one of you <coughs> One for the appointment, one for the salary requirement. Okay. Okay, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Granby appoint David J. Roach to fill the newly created position of part-time sole assessor beginning July 1st, 2004 for the term ending September 30th, 2007. <laughs> second to that. I'll second it. Side over. <laughs> Okay. Right. I want to explain about the term. Let's see. Normally, sole, the sole assessor by law is a six-year term, but all terms end at the same time. And the last six-year period started in 2001 and will end in September 30th, 2007. So that is the... Uh, we will not be committed to a full six years this time, but that's when the... the uh, term would, would end. Um, we have a resolution. We have a second. Uh, any discussion at all? I thought our interview process went very well. We had uh, we asked the same questions of each candidate. And, uh, it, was, it was very consistent. Mm -hmm. And that's glad you made it. That's glad to be that. very, very fair. Whatever the number of questions were, I want everybody to know. Let's say there was 20 or 25 without looking it up. Every candidate got the same question. To keep the right, she says, very fair. Okay. Any, any discussion? Ruth, would you call the roll? Uh, Councillor Edwards? Yes. Councillor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councillor Haggerty? Yes. Okay. Councillor Abbott? Yes. Thank you. Did you have a question on that? I beg your pardon? Did you have a question on that? What are, what are, Can you wait until the end of the, uh, the the meeting, please. Oh, okay. We're going to have another resolution regarding okay. salary and so forth, and maybe right. your question will be answered. I you were just talking about the civil assessor. Um, so I would like to welcome you to our Thank Granby. <coughs> we are very excited. Your credentials are excellent. Your experience, you have a lot of experience in this. And I know. But I told him, I said, you know, the honeymoon will be over soon. <laughs> he knows that, because every assessor runs into that problem. But, uh, there's, there's a lot of work to do. Right? There Thank is. Yeah. Well, we're very excited. And this is a, a major departure, and I, I think it's, I'm, I'm just very confident it's going to work out well. Big step forward. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of work to do, but we'll get through it uh, as a board, as a, mm -hmm. as a town, as a community. And uh, there'll be some bumps along the way. There always are. But we'll do what needs to be done and mm -hmm. what's best for Granby. I also, in my uh, letters of thank you to the previous, or to the assessors that are leaving office at the end of this month uh, pointed out is no, no reflection on them. I think it's just one of the biggest problems is it's hard to find three elected people who are willing to work equally and put all three put in the kind of time that it would take. And it's just not fair to have uh, three elected and then one person holding, you know, doing much of the work most of the time. And that's a situation we've had from time to time through the years, an inconsistency. But I do appreciate, and especially would mention Mary Ann, you've stepped in uh, this first six months of the year and been very, very helpful to us. Thank you, and we 
appreciate it, and we look forward to you continuing as assessor clerk, and I know that David does also. Yes, I was already telling her I'm very happy she's been Good, good. Uh, we also had, we should put it in the form of what we have agreed to uh, in terms of salary and hours. <coughs> A resolution revolving salary. Be it resolved that the average work hour, work hours for the newly appointed part-time sole assessor to be two days per week, and the salary from July the first to December thirty first, two thousand and four, will be set at one thousand four hundred and sixteen dollars and sixty seven cents per month. The amount currently budgeted for the assessor's personal services. Okay. Okay. Second to that one. Second. Okay. What that amounts to is um, the amount that we are currently budgeted for the three assessors will not now be paid to our sole assessor between now and the end of the year. It is understood that uh, one reason that we are staying with that amount at this point is because some of the heavy work or more time consuming work has been completed the first half of the year. Uh, next year, budget time, we certainly will renegotiate, and uh, I would expect a, a fair size bump up on that one. But, uh, and even the days per week, I think at this point, we're going to work with two days and see how that goes. So that's where we start, and we'll take it from there. Any questions? Or? Bruce, would you follow the roll on that one? Councilor Edwards? Yes. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yes. Okay. Um, we have Ruth, you had some, a, an application for a junk dealer's license? Yes, I do. It's from Richard Boyce, located at 139 Mybolt Road, Hannibal. Uh, he will be dismantling cars and selling par used parts and scrap metal and so forth. It has been approved by our town constable. Okay. We, uh, I believe we have to have a resolution to accept that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll second Okay. Bruce, will you call the roll? Councilor Edwards? Yes. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yes. Okay. Now, we have received an application from the Granby Center Fire Department to display fireworks. Uh, the date is the 10th of July, 2004. According to our new policy that we adopted in February, we said that this application should be made out uh, covering all the details as set forth in the state penal law, which I, is it 512? So our application reflects that. Section 405 of the New York State Penal Law. Uh, and that sets forth how many feet from the nearest buildings and so forth. Uh, we indicated at that time that Fireworks could only be allowed if the permit process addressed all of these details as set forth in this uh, application. Uh, we had an inspection by Mr. Edward Gears from Oswego. We felt that this, you know, someone would say, well, you know, you can't have someone from our own codes department or so forth. Uh, do the inspection. So Mr. Gears was kind enough to come down, do the measurements, uh, check it out, check out the application and the proximity of buildings and so forth. He signed here as the uh, fire chief who was approving the application. Uh, <coughs> and he says that site meets all code requirements and safety requirements will be in place as needed to protect the area. With my experience, there is no resident that will be affected. And that's from uh, Mr. Gears. 
You've he, had a chance yeah, to he's look. Is he a Fire Department? Yes, he does the inspections when the Gucci's come to town. So he's very familiar with the law and uh, uh, what to look for. So we've all had a chance to look at that application. It is up to the town board to, to no, uh, uh, pass a resolution approving a, okay, of any fireworks display in the town. So Do someone you have like a site map for the area of the I'm office? sorry? Do you have a site map? Yes, we do. Uh, please do not bring up questions right now. They, they come up at the end of the program, or at the end of the meeting. Yes. You may look at the application. If you want to come in tomorrow, I'll show you all the papers that are in there. Well, you know, sometime you can look at it after the meeting if you wish. This is our duty. We, we will go ahead and... Uh, did you make the motion? I, I beg your pardon, sir. We have rules of how we do business here. Now, where were we? We're waiting for somebody to make the motion. Okay. I'll, I'll, make the, I'll make the motion. Okay. Vince made the motion. Who would like to second it? I'll second it. I've read the application, <coughs> and Mr. Gears is a very competent person for the inspections. Um, if all of the stuff that we put set forth in the application um, has been set forth <coughs> by the inspection team. There really shouldn't be any problem that day. So it's got a lot's going to depend on the weather. A lot's going to depend on the wind, the weather, and whatnot, and there's alternate um, means to take care of that. But I will second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well, my only comment is if it passes all the state requirements, I don't see how we can deny it if it passes all this. You yourself brought the paper in that gave all the rules. I don't see how it can pass. They can't get 200 feet away from a building if they're having that in the backyard. All right. Um, Bruce, would you call the roll? Councilor Edwards? Yes. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yes. Okay, thank you. Like I said, I will. you may up after the meeting and look at the application. <coughs> Every year we have a maintenance contract with Craig Gilbert for our copiers, and uh, that's due to come up again. Uh, since it requires someone's signature, I would ask for a, a resolution to. Could we have quiet? <coughs> Could we uh, have a resolution to enter into these maintenance agreements? One is for the town, the, the copier in the town clerk's office. One is for the town court office, and one is the assessor's office. I only got one question. I can make. I'll make the. I'll make the motion. I didn't total them up. It's three hundred ninety-one dollars, two hundred forty dollars, and two hundred forty dollars. Well, the same as last year. Oh, second. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Very good. And it's something they cover not only uh, breakdowns, but uh, drums, developer, toner, fuser, rollers, all parts and labor, uh, except color toner and developer, so, which we do not have. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We have a second. Do you have a second on that? Yes. Okay. Who's to call the roll? Councilor Edwards? Yes. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> now, something has been on my desk. I want to get off my desk. I've been getting uh, faxes and phone calls from a, an attorney in New York City for a long time probably as close to a year. It's regarding, he's trying to get together letters of support for a collateral source bill, S, meaning Senate 622 or Assembly 3483. Um, and this bill, let me see if I can find the description. The bill would remedy the current inequity situation where it is only the public employer 
which, when sued by one of its employees in a personal injury action, must pay what amounts to a double recovery to the employee for lost earnings. And uh, I guess that's because it, the employer pays for uh, disability pension and so forth. Um, it does appear to be something that needs to be remedied. He points out that at this point, the Oswego County has passed a resolution of support. Also, the cities of Fulton and Oswego, the towns of Constantia, Hannibal, Hastings Parish, and Richland, and the villages of Cleveland and Pulaski. I don't care. We can do nothing about it. We could, but I could write a letter similar to the letters that have been written. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, here's an example of find one of these letters. Uh, there's a mayor of the village of Plaskai requesting your support. At these times of economic stress, I feel the cities, towns, and villages are unfairly burdened with what amounts to be double recovery for lost future earnings and personal injury losses. This bill would treat all plaintiffs and defendants equally regarding jury awards for lost future earnings without limiting the awards for pain and suffering. Uh, I did talk to our town attorney about it. He saw no problem with us if we wanted to put our support on that. Uh, so, up to you. It's not a good thing. Whatever, do read it. Boy. Can we discuss it more or some other time, or do we have, don't have to do it tonight? Well, you wanted us to, we could discuss it some other time. He kind of wanted it done by, he said that perhaps the uh, legislature would not be in session after June 30th, and that's why well, I thought it was Yeah, that's for sure. They're, not, they, they're all done, <laughs> they're all done before that. No comment. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you want to wait and look it over. Well. I don't understand enough about it. I would it. say, if you're going to make a big fuss over it, let's not even do anything. I don't about understand it Because enough. I don't want to invest any more time on it. Okay. I personally do not understand enough about it. So okay. I would admit personally. That's right. why I'm let's, not let's just not do it then. Okay. That's just me now. Okay. That's fine. I'm one boat. I just uh, wanted to bring it up so bring we up the can, workshop. you know, either get rid of it or do something with it. Because I keep getting these faxes and I'm tired of it. I've got more higher priorities. Okay, county legislator. I think I saw one. Yes. Yeah, it is. This is a higher priority. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, obviously, the monthly meeting for legislators is tomorrow night. It's usually at 2 o'clock, tomorrow it's at 7. It's a, it's a night meeting. It's uh, at like 3. If anybody wants to come, come on down at 7. There's not a lot going on. I, uh, we're gonna, I brought a packet of resolutions with me if anybody wants to look at them. Uh, one of them is the DMV. I think that's one that uh, people are curious about. We're gonna pass the resolution to keep all three DMVs open for the rest of this year. Uh, it's, they're gonna produce more revenue than they're gonna cause. It's a good, it's a good thing for the public. It's a good thing for, for the county. Uh, we're gonna sell a res or pass a resolution to make blacktop available for municipalities that are interested in it. Uh, that's also a good thing for the county. Um, we have several municipalities that are requesting us to sell them blacktop. They're begging us almost to sell them. It is, they cannot find it cheaper and more readily available than we can give it to them. So I know there's a lot of people that think that it's a bad idea, but they got to call up West Monroe and they got to call up Hastings. And, all these count, all these municipalities are really asking us to to sell it to them. We're not out looking to. Are you uh, DOT approved? Um, that's not my concern. Uh, we're Don't selling it to them. So um, the other big issue is Michaud Nursing Home. We had several legitimate offers on Michaud. We're going to be uh, talking. We've already started talking. The health committee this week has interviewed two of the prospective investors. Um, there's been several, there's been a lot of interest in it. Uh, that's going to be a good thing for the county too, I believe. Um, again, our monthly meeting is at 7. I'd like to make a comment. There's some people back here upset, just for the board's sake. In the, legis down at the legislative, uh, 
uh, meetings, we give the opportunity for the public to get up and speak prior to our meeting on any of the agenda items before we have our meeting. I think it's something that should be considered because these we people We might are, consider that another year. Well, another, I'm not right, know, obviously. It's too late, but just the people The important are thing upset. is it cannot be during the meeting. Right, but it should. I, I think it's important to give people to discuss, a chance to discuss what the agendas are going to be, especially before you're voting on something. Give these people an opportunity to talk and say what their feelings are. Regardless if you know it's going to affect the outcome of the vote or not, they should have the opportunity before the vote is taken, not after. Well, we've had considerable discussion at previous meetings, so we kind of. Uh, it would just be a discussion time. I know what you're saying. They sign in. We do it every month on every agenda item. Um, any questions? In regards to the uh, suspension of uh, blacktop, are you selling just the blacktop, or are you selling the services of uh, laying it on the ground? Or either or. Pardon? Either or. Either or. Because in the newspaper, it's only been selling of the blacktop. Nothing was said about them. There's three different situations available. You can buy the blacktop and pick it up yourself. You can buy it and you deliver it, or you can buy it with us placing uh, it at the town. Is there scale to the blacktop? Sir? Yes, there is. They'll, they'll weigh in coming in and going out. Mrs. Holmes asked a question, which I think is kind of important. Is the DOT approved? You said it was not your concern. It's I not believe. my, I, I Excuse me, Mike. But I think as a legislator, it would be your concern not to be selling something that was not DOT approved. It was going to come back and haunt you afterwards for selling something that was not up to par. We can't sell a product that isn't within the required, or the formula set by the, I think, the state. I don't know. The, who sets the formula? I don't know who sets it. Yeah, we have, there's a, a formula for the black dog. It's not rocket science to, build, to make this stuff. Um, I'm not the one running the plant, so I don't know what the qualifications are. They tell, come and tell us what they're doing. We, uh, we vote on whether or not we think it's a good idea. Uh, we're putting $480,000 in there to buy product. Our revenues are going to over $700,000. That's the projection that we have right now of the people that want it. Has the scale always been in there? Yes. I, I don't believe that a struggle county should be uh, uh, selling blacktop to anyone, municipalities, uh, uh, cities. I, I don't believe that we should be in the blacktop business. I don't disagree. Uh, I, I don't believe that we can manufacture to standard. Some of your roads have already proved that that are up there. Competition with private business. A struggle county opportunities is in competition with Golden Sun. I don't. I just don't think that this should. This should be going on with our tax dollars. Anybody? Well, let me tell you this last. Anybody that's going to that's come to uh, approach us to, to buy blacktop office does not buy blacktop in Swivel County. They go out of our county. They go to go to Jamestown. Or, Jamesville, they go to Jamesville. They, 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 they do not. We're not competing with anybody in our county for the sub black dollar we're selling. But it, it, I don't really believe it matters. I, I believe that private enterprise. I, I, I don't believe that a Swivel County should start a construction company to compete against you. Since 1940 yeah. something, they, they sold black dollar. There's nothing new. They stopped it in what 1999 or 2000 when they built the new plant. There was. From 1940, or even before that, they had the plants out there. They were that blacktop was available to all the municipalities. This is nothing. No, I, no, I remember okay. our role. Why, while we were selling blacktop to all these people, the municipalities are making it available. Our Northern decided to put a plant in. Barrett decided to put a plant in. While we were doing it, I mean, we're not competing with them. They come in while we were producing blacktop. It's not like we all of a sudden start and compete with them. They knew we had it when they came here. Well, that was fine when we didn't have a plant around. But now we have plants. We I have private enterprise. Right. Government should not be in the business to produce material to sell. Well, let me tell you this. Our trucks will go out there and set hours at a time waiting to get filled. They can't produce the product fast enough for us to use. That's why we have our own plant. We, don't, we can't have downtime. Downtime is very expensive. Uh, all these ludicrous numbers you see in the paper for the blacktop prices, that's not a realistic price. You've got to see what the price is when you get it at the site, not when you pick it up. You can go, 
somebody put a price in there that's 65 miles, 70 miles away, one way. That's ludicrous to think you're going to send a driver in a truck that far and save four dollars on a ton. <laughs> you just can't think it. By the time the product gets back, you got a cold joint, now you have a problem. You have to have continuous. Northern can't keep up with us when we, we need the product. They don't have, they did, they had to shut everybody else down. They, their plan isn't like ours. They can't produce the product we can produce. That's the problem. We have a state-of-the-art plan that we have to utilize. Now, the option is to sell it, and I'm not against that either. But I'm saying if we're not going to sell it this year, let's utilize it this year. Why are we passing up this opportunity to have some revenue for the county and help the people in their tax base? All right, I, you, you, you answered that question. I, okay. I, and I, you all know how to contact Mike if you have no. further questions and, and can attend the meeting. You mentioned several things that are going to be passed. Thank you for your report. Okay. We have a report uh, from the dog control officer for the month of May 2004. We had 31 complaints, three dogs picked up. Uh, no dogs destroyed or died, one dog released, two dogs on hand, the food was donated, uh, no other expenses except monthly mileage, which was 435 miles. We also collected impoundment fees of $10, and that's from Gail Kalen, our dog control officer. Assessors? Um, we had uh, grievance day, fourth Tuesday in May. We had 15 homeowners show up between the two sessions. We had two more that were uh, that weren't able to attend, but had submitted the proper paperwork. And we had quite a few that were um, resolved through a stipulation, which is when you talk to the assessor and come to an agreement before um, grievance day. So we, we resolved most of the issues over assessed values prior to um, the board being here. But it um, came and went, and I think it went well. And that's how it is. That's our final roll coming out July 1st with all the corrections on it. We have two homeowners that uh, have decided to go to small claims. And we're happy with the board's decision, and they will proceed to the next step. Well, that's the procedure. Right. That's, these procedures are in place for that purpose, and uh, I would guess that many of the people who, I know a lot of people came in prior to Grievance Day, and, and if there were errors and so forth, I, I believe you were able to take care of them then. So, that's yep. good. Very good. Thank you. Well, I have a note from the historian, no request for genealogy for the month of May. Had an invitation to attend a workshop in Saratoga, but was unable to attend. Uh, I continue to purge files using the SARA recommendations, that's the state uh, archives uh, standards. I'm available on Tuesday evenings for one-to-one one, one one with the public and am available by phone or email. That's Elaine Woolridge, our historian. Planning board? I don't think we have anyone here. I believe they had a public hearing, but I don't know what, what they're working on right now. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Yes, we, uh, we had two uh, hearings last month, and uh, we've got one that we've slated for this month, so on the fourth Tuesday, again, we'll probably have two votes for it. Okay, you're busy. Good. Um, the youth program is going. Uh, as scheduled, we had a successful trip to the zoo on May 22nd. The next trip is 29th to Beaver Lake. And, uh, these are for Granby children. We had a grandmother in this morning or this afternoon, and I had to tell her 
you know, because the grandchildren were not Grand Beach residents and could not do it because that would just open up a whole another you know, ton of people. And uh, uh, I was superintendent. Of course, it's going to be a little bit different to start off with tonight because what I'm going to talk about, the board's aware of, they've already moved on it, but I just want to bring the public up to speed on what we're doing with one of our vehicles and why things kind of move so fast. Um, we've been having problems with our 1989 Paystar truck and it's problems with the engine. Last winter, it was doubtful if it was going to make it through and uh, I met with the board and they gave me permission to go ahead and replace the engine if it uh, went down suddenly because it is one of our major plow trucks. But we were able to get it through the winter. Um, a lot of it was by substituting a 1982 truck that we have as our backup. So a lot of our equipment's getting a little bit older here. Um, we got the truck in May, we looked it over, we took the sander off and cleaned it all off and went through it. And we started tallying up everything that really needed to be replaced to get it serviceable so we felt like it would be a truck that we could rely on again in the winter, especially one like we had last winter. The cost of the repairs came up to be more than 10 times the value of the vehicle. It's, it, um, it just didn't seem cost effective to me to, to keep putting money into this older truck. So with that I went to the board and uh, presented it to them and, and they agreed with me. So we decided to, uh, to get another truck um, and buy it off the state bid because we thought we could get the best pricing by doing it that way. Um, we used to buy all pay stars and they're a little bit more expensive trucks. And they were never on state bid. And to cut costs a little bit, we're going with a 7600 series um, international 6x4. Um, the thing with the uh, state bid, though, and I found this out late in May, was that the state bid expires in June, and it's pretty close to today. Um, so if we wanted to take advantage of this state bid, we had to do it right away. And if we didn't, um, the word I got was they weren't going to extend the bid right away, they weren't going to award another bid. It's normally four, five, or six months before they do, and they're projecting maybe a $5,000 cost increase because of the steel prices have taken such a drastic jump. So I felt it was important to move right away on that, and the board agreed. Um, the cost of this truck, it's going to be $134,900. And uh, as I said, it's a 7600 Series International 6x4. It's got a Cummings 385 engine in it, automatic transmission. It comes with a dump box. The sander is going to be built into the dump box because the sander on the truck we had was 22 years old and, and uh, wasn't much left of it. And also, that is all the plow equipment. And it comes with a five year warranty on the vehicle, the engine, and the transmission. Realizing that it takes six months for delivery, we're uh, hoping that uh, by moving this quickly we can have this truck, hopefully before we get into the worst of next winter's weather. Um, other than that, their normal summer work has been progressing, sweeping, mowing, spray, patching, hauling stone. And you know we had all that rain in May, so the great all's been out almost every day trying to take care of water problems. And, uh, and the only thing is I had the... Um, anode on our underground heating oil tank tested this requirement and uh, that came back okay so we're in compliance there and that's a double wall protected tank and we have to make sure the protection is still viable and it is so and so i have i noticed today they're the county's uh, fixing 55 yes they're over there taking up the road where it was a mistake before apparently the oil or something was too much oil or lack of oil or I don't know what the problem was but it came apart on them. Um, they are selling millings. I don't know if they have, you know, if everything they're going to mill has already been committed or not. But if people are interested they need to call the county directly. It's 349-3437 and get on a list. Um, Mike could probably tell you I think it's $50 a load is what they charge. $40. $40. And it looks, the, the few loads I've seen looks like really good material coming up in fine pieces. So if anybody's interested.
guys if it was an opportunity maybe for them to get some good fill for the driveway or whatever. Thank you very much. Code enforcement, we have a report. David, do you want to give this report? Maybe if you wish. David's a little late, Don. We'll let someone else do the talking. <coughs> this, uh, this last month for the code enforcement, uh, building permits 27, fees collected $2,540.10, construction value $235,795, inspections 31, zoning complaints at 7, five junk vehicles, two unfit notices, letters sent, and unfit notices put on house, uh, junk vehicles removed one, unfit mobile homes removed one, fire inspections none. Uh, submitted by Brace Talents, Harold Babcock, and Robert Dalton. Thank you. Okay, I've submitted my monthly re financial report to the board. All the accounts are in good order about where they should be at uh, after five months of the year, and none of the accounts are, of course, uh, none are overdrawn. Um, Bruce? Well, I was able to attend a class in, at uh, Utica, SUNY, SUNY and Utica uh, on Word. My, my computer program, my Word computer program, and I found it was very helpful, very beneficial. I was very glad I was able to go to it. I've already been able to implement a number of things that I've learned at that class, uh, the two classes I attended. Okay. We have a motion to uh, approve payment of the town bills. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the town bills from abstract 061, claim number 475 to claim number 523 in the amount of $6,145.77 from the general fund, $14,583.60 from the highway fund, $80.60 from the World War Hawaii District, $867.31 from West River Road Water District. Thank you. Second. Oh, okay, group, call the roll. Councilor Edwards? Yes. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, oh, now we will open a period of public comment. Please come forward. <laughs> uh, Mark Gardner, number three, uh, talk fireworks. Okay. First, now on the voting, uh, nothing I say, but being affiliated with the fire department, should he vote? I, we thought about that, but you know, we all have connections to one fire department and the other, of one kind or another, and because there is no um, financial gain or any other kind of gain, to be achieved by anyone up here that we, I didn't feel it was necessary for us then to abstain. He's Cody anyways. Yeah. Yeah. It's still, you know. Well, you know, I used to go to the auxiliary. I mean, you know, it, there, it, there's always going to be some kind of connection. Can I, can I comment okay, on now, that? Uh, yes. Uh, Dave, uh, you want to go ahead? Yeah. <clears throat> we, had, we had talked about it in the back room before we come out here, and I was going to abstain. And uh, then they, we more or less got talking about it, like Nancy said. but. Um, from looking at the application and looking at uh, what Mr. Gears wrote, um, we put this application in place on your complaints from before, and we went with the state codes. And if they can come back and, and uh, fulfill all the obligations that you guys set forth, that you told us about, and, uh, and where they is the site? I'm sorry. Where is the site of the fireworks? Behind uh, Mr. Babcock's home. I don't see where he can be 200 bucks. Well, they measured it. I can show you the measurement. And this is why we we set forth this this permit on the state on the state's uh, codes. Whose name is the permit? The. Uh, oh, let me see what it is. Okay, next seven page. Here. Next page. I think I got it. Next one. This is just the guy's name. Yeah. Well, the permit was, applicant's name is Stephen Pierce, who is the uh, operator of the fireworks. Is that what you mean? Well, I just wonder if it was issued like to the fire department for the fireworks. Or the group or organization, which is the next line, is mm -hmm. the Granby Center Volunteer Fire Department. Fire department grounds then? Pardon? Shouldn't it be on fire department grounds? 
I don't know that that's well, a necessity. It's on Harold's name, right? Pardon? It's on Harold's yard. It should have been in his name. Not necessarily. He has. He's so. just allowing them to use his space. That's not his application. Okay. Do you have the bond? He's not hiring them. Do you have the fidelity we, bond? We have all the, the paperwork here. Now, uh, the debris comes down in my yard, neighbor's yard. What gives any of you the right to say it's okay for someone to litter my yard with debris and burning shell? We we went by the law, and we're hopefully yeah. The shells come down; they're burning. I had damage to paint on my vehicles a couple years ago. My pool was full of shells. My yard. I said something to a couple of firemen. They laughed at me. I thought it was funny. I guess, though, Mark, what we need to do is because we got this new application in place and they fulfilled, they said that all the everything that's written in there, they said that they could take and, and uh, obey it. And, and that you can see afterwards if you like. The night of the fireworks, um, you know, if something happens, um, we went by the law if you asked us to go by. And we had Mr. Gears come in as a neutral person. I'm sorry? We, we can't really, um, I mean, I didn't go out. We've got 260 feet, 280 feet, 320 feet, 290 feet. This opening isn't that big back And, and you got to understand, open. we have to vote on what we see in front of us, okay? And and Ed Gear is, is chief from the Sugo Fire Department. He does Garucci, and he's, he, put his, he put his signature on there and said there's not a problem. So as a, as a board, we have to take and pretty much go with what his, you know, if, if he says it's okay, I mean, I don't have any authority to tell him it's not okay. And we just did exactly what you asked us to do. He asked us to go by the law, and that's what we did. And I, mean, I know you're upset, and um, we're trying to do what we can do to, to make it right so everybody can enjoy the fireworks and everybody can be safe afterwards. And that's the main concern. So like that. I think we all recognize too that our fire department's safety is their their there isn't one person purpose for being here. Now, when I say something about it, they laugh at me. Their purpose is uh, safe. This is uh, you know. I said something I, about Larry's cows being spooked. They thought that was hilarious. The ones that I spoke to. But you can't really judge the whole fire department not a couple of people. No, I'm just the fire department has got a lot of real good people in it. I'm not looking to be a pain to me. I'm just and we understand that. I don't that. like burning shells coming down on my house, on my vehicles. And, and that's one of the things that night, I'm sure, uh, that they're going to be looking at very, very, very closely. And who's going to clean it up if there is? I'll jump into the fire here, too. I know Larry, Mr. Larry Fink, very well. And I, I, I sympathize with you, too. And I, as you probably yeah, know, most and I talked to three or four of the other neighbors before this all came about. And not, not to be redundant on what uh, Dave just said, we got the law like the people asked. They did that while I was away at the foundation at the time. Now we went out and spent the money. I, Nancy could tell me, I forget how much he charged. We got an outside inspector because we want to make sure that everything was on the up and up. And we can't turn something down if they're following the law and you get it inspected. I mean, there's nothing we could do. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. I want to see the and let's see what happens. I really can't believe that anybody in the Granby Center Fire Department would willfully want to go out and, and do something uh, dangerous. Well, I'm not saying they would. I'm just saying people I talked to in the past would laugh at all about I'd like to say something to Mr. Gardner. Uh, the only reason that I voted because that I voted yes was because I thought that the meeting that you came to when we discussed it and you had the guidelines you gave us that if we followed whoever made out the permit followed all those rules that it was okay i mean with you yeah i just i i, I know here's the yard i live across the road from it i just don't see it big enough to be able to meet the measurements uh, trees around it the building the neighbors there Larry Fink, 379 County Route 3, Fulton, New York. Um, I think I have to say at this time that, uh, with due respect to Mr. Greco, first of all, you said the town board came up with these guidelines of the New York State Penal Laws. We brought them to you. The town board didn't know anything about the No, that's not right. correct. 
the night that he brought him, I had him here also. Remember that? Okay. I had done my okay. homework on Seven. that. Seven. But uh, I think I still have to say, what about the clutter and the debris and the littering and the embers coming down on the buildings and the chance of a good fire happening down the road here? What's the fire department going to do? What's the town board going to do? Are you going to take and I, I really feel you should, maybe if you are going to give this permit, I think you should put a set of guidelines with that permit saying to the fire department that you go by these guidelines and we will pass the permit. You have the right and the authority to do this, and I think you need to do that. And I think what they need to do is come down through the Granby Center area and clean up every bit of litter. I think they need to take and have firemen around. My cattle get disturbed every year. Frankie Kurkowski's animals go haywire too, and I've been putting them in for four years. Regardless of Shane Hawes was better, which didn't mean a damn thing to me, I'll tell you that much. All they were saying is that they weren't going to come down for another year to fix fences, like they did for two and a half hours the first year after I requested that they come down and stand around that fence. Now, I cannot see how a town board of Granby, I don't care if it's law or not, this is beyond the New York State penal law at this point. It comes down to the sensitivity to taxpayers that pay your taxes, your salaries, and each and every year we have to, as taxpayers, and some of us out here, there's quite a few occurring lately, and have to put up with this nonsense every year. I cannot believe that the town board did not have any more sensitivity than that. So I guess I have to say at this point that uh, um, <clears throat> at this point, I'm going to put the town board at the Navy Center and the fire organization on notice. And that's all I have to say. Okay. I don't know why I get off. I feel like I'm talking to the wall. First of all, uh, first of all, I sat on the board for 15 years, and all that ever attended our meetings was him and our highway guy. You have a good crowd here tonight. You have a good crowd every month now. And when they want to discuss something with you, Nancy, you should discuss the things with them. You should have had these people discuss what they're talking about now before you pass this law. Before you not say, come and see us afterwards. Rose, you have been all the Excuse time. Excuse me, okay. I have the floor. All right. Okay. Go ahead. You not, don't say come and see us after you pass it. You should listen to the people first. They are here to, to, to talk to you people. And, and Vince, you know, we were up there for 15 years with only two people in this audience. And this is what you people like. Vince, this is, Nancy, this is what you like, two people. You don't like a crowd like this because you don't want them to speak. You don't want to listen to them. And I wish you people would wake up and listen to the people before you vote on something. Please, listen to them. Thank you. Oh, and another thing about the fireworks. <coughs> Did you tell them there's a gas station right in the backyard where the fireworks are being shut off? This gas station. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Walt. We have had the same uh, listen rules. Listen to the people, Nancy. We have had the same rules of procedure since I've been here six years, and you were on the board most of those years. May I finish? Our procedure is, uh, I'm sorry it seems harsh at times, but this is, there's a distinction between uh, town, town meeting government, which they used to have back in New England, and representative government. We have representative government. We have a job to do. We do listen to people. But we do not allow, and we never have allowed, the public to join in our deliberations on a given uh, well, uh, don't motion. Talk to all first and then say, Come and talk to us after we have talked to to uh, a number of you, and we I think we have a pretty good sense of what the uh, opinions are. Okay. Frank Fox, twenty-eight, Congress, three county. Um, I'm sure that. Uh, all honorable people, 
and it's not that I'm overly concerned with David Edwards' vote, but um, to avoid any appearance of an impropriety. That's that's the only consideration. I'm I sure told, that he's not a I told him I'm that sure it was that all right. Shane Law is an honorable person. I'm sure that the chief of uh, Swigo is here, is it? I'm not. I'm not Mr. Gears. Oh, all right. Well, I'm sure that the person that did it was an honorable person. Good job. But uh, the point is that how, how many people did the town board come and ask down on Route 3 about their concern with the fireworks? You said that you talked to people and you're well aware of what's going on. How many people did you, Mr. Haggerty, come down and knock on the door and ask them? Because this was a concern of Mr. Fink before <coughs> his cattle, his aging mother. How many people did you talk no. to? None. Vince was down there. How many people did you talk to, Vince? You didn't say, talk to me. You know, I didn't. I How many people did you stop and talk to? I believe five. Who? Name them. It's Larry Fink, Dawn, I happen to come in. The gentleman, had, I'm terrible with names, I forget them. Gentleman across the street, Larry gave me his name. If he says it for me, that I can't think of the gentleman. And there was two other. Four. Okay. four I commend me, you, Vince. I commend you for doing that. Well, this was way back when he first, when Mr. Fink came in, or and <clears throat> Mr. Gardner both came in. I think and somebody else might have been with him. How many people did you talk to, David? Actually, I didn't go down Route Three to talk to anybody. Okay. Um, Thank you. Nancy, how many people did you talk to? I did not go knocking on doors. We have discussed this at several board meetings. I also had two people um, from the fire department come into my office, and they have a, yeah. a right to their point of view also. True, true. And it, I, it, it's, not, you know. it's not so much that the penal law is in question, uh, which it is, I guess, is a matter of measurements. But it's not so much just the penal law. It's the feelings and the concerns of the people who pay your salary of the residents of the town of Granby. And, and this should be in addition to the stats or whatever you want to say of the penal law. Well. Uh, and, and, and Mike, our illustrious uh, county legislator, Mike French, made a good point. I mean, if you have some serious uh, issues and, a, and something you're going to pass, you should allow limited we Question. can't do it in an I, indiscriminate way. We I have know. to either, at the beginning and, and, of the year, decide how we're going to okay, run the so meeting. So at the beginning of the year, I think you should... That's something to consider, and I would and, consider And have some general comments at the end for people to get up and say something, you know? But before you vote on, on a serious issue, whether it's a public referendum or whatever, or a public meeting or whatever before, uh, you, you should have the input of the people that are involved in the thing. You should be allowed to have some voice. And that's the reason we have, and, and what the state deems the most serious, uh, important issues, we have public hearings. Well, I, I, I think that, that uh, uh, the fireworks is a very serious issue because of the fact that Fulton had the same problem. They were having fallout, as I recall, on homes and property, and they had to change the location and the direction of the fireworks because they were going to get sued. They shoot them off over the lake. Yeah, but before they didn't. Oh, now they do. For two years they shot them over the river and they changed and went back to the lake. Yeah. But they've been because shooting they them over the Granby. Route. They've been shooting them in Granby as long as that, from when I was a kid, nobody... They, no, the they haven't. They, no, they haven't. No, they haven't oh, yeah. because I was a... I've been assistant fire chief in Granby. I used to watch them from my house. I was assistant Granby fire chief for, for six years. And I was president of the Chiefs Association, so don't tell me what Granby is. Maybe 20 doing. years ago, then. Well, Mr. Fox, I'd like to. So, so mm -hmm. it's been just recently the fireworks, mm -hmm. but recently Larry Fink's had a serious problem. And, and last but not least, I'd like to know was there a bond posted for $5,000? You say the paperwork is there. I, I, is there a bond posted for $5,000 that is required by statute? To, I, I, I'm not sure. There is a liability insurance there's right liability there. Liability insurance. I, there's a bond. It says bond. you got to post a bond, $5,000. indemnity insurance before they have a thing about insurance, which I saw that. If it isn't, then it's License. no good. You don't have a right to admit it. You don't have a right to pass it. Well, one thing I'd like to ask you, Mr. Fox, seeing you had something to do with the fire department, 
tax several years ago, maybe the town board or maybe the residents that, that this affects, maybe we could go to the fire department, somebody could that's got a little bit of pull with that, and say, hey, after the thing's all over with, can they make sure the following day to go around and pick up the debris? I don't know what this is. No, if, if any debris falls, make people feel if any bit debris falls, I'm going to have, on my property, okay, I'm going to have an outside firm come in, bill me for the pickup, and then I'm going to present it to you. I would think it's payment out of the bond, okay? I want to know, has the bond been posted? I don't see. I don't I, see. I, I we'll we'll have to I look at that. I if I saw if the bond has not been posted as of this date, as of this time, then you cannot legally pass that resolution. resolution. Mm -hmm. I asked for the Senate before I asked the certificate of insurance. That's the law. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. Yeah. Well, I want to know. Well, I don't Nancy, know. I don't what's this here? 10,000? Well, how can you vote on something you don't know what you're voting on? I don't recall that bond being part of the requirements. Certificate of insurance. They got a certificate of liability insurance here saying 10,000. 50,000 and 10,000. What we agreed to do was a certain section of um, section 412, and I don't recall that's that. That's not a cash bond. Uh, it's got to be bond or indemnity insurance. Yeah. Material, mm. license. Well, I'll sit down what you look for, but you can't. Before, before you go, I'd like. <laughs> I, I'm sorry everybody's all upset. I honestly thought that because Mr. Gardner presented the state law that, it, that he was satisfied if they were followed. I, I think if you go back, I think if you go back and look at the minutes, if they were if they were taken, I'm sure Ruth took them uh, meticulously. That there was a mention of the fact that uh, he was concerned with the not following the statute, but also of the fact that he was concerned about his cattle and the debris and the stress on his mother. He was 91 years old, by the way, and he gets very nervous. But if you follow the state penal law, how can how can we do anything any different? If if they follow the law, the law is a guideline. Okay, you can add or subtract to that guideline. At this particular point in time, we made the resolution, and we were we limited to that law. I now, think, well, I realize that, but I mean... Another know, year, if we want to look at it again and decide there's some other regulations you, you have, to put in place, have, but we have, have not, the, for this year, put any other regulations in place. Do you have the proper bonding? Excuse me, uh, Mr. Supervisor. According to the law here, it said, and there's one that you people got, and we all got, I was away at the time, certificate of liability insurance in the amount of a million dollars, and that's what this thing right here shows. Because no, I knew I saw about insurance. Pardon? No, What's it? Well, it says on this law that we passed. I have a million. They got a million. This is what we we agreed to go with. New York State Penal Law, Section 405. 405. Uh, where is it? The permit authority may accept and lose such bond and indemnity insurance policy with liability coverage and indemnity protection equivalent to the terms and conditions that are provided. So that's what we have. Yeah, okay, so you have that. Yes. Okay, so it's a minimum, it's at least $5,000, well, and you it's said it's more. It's a okay. We have liability of $1 million, is it? $1 million. The whole thing is $1 okay. million. Dollars. That's all I want to know, because well, you seem confused. I knew what I was Well, right, because it didn't ring a bell. And I, well, Born threw me off. Yeah. I never looked at for insurance. Right. Minimum of five thousand. Minimum of five thousand. Okay. I think they've gone above and beyond that. They got a million. <coughs> Good evening. Yeah. My name is Ed Williamson, Bingham Road, Town of Granby. I know you people are following supposedly the law, that uh, the penal law from the state, and I did check with not only our local state police, but the state police headquarters in Albany. They indicated to me that 
municipalities, special groups, and etc., can apply for a permit from their local town boards or uh, city uh, offices or whatever to put on fireworks. However, fireworks in itself for anyone else is illegal in the state of New York. Then I asked them, I said, if this fireworks causes undue harassment to people such as, and I use different things like in their yards, on their cars, scaring their cattle if it happens to be a country area, or etc. They said if this happens, that the person who owns the property that's it affecting can call the state police and they will, will immediately respond to the complaint. Now, exactly what they will do at this point, I do not know. We also advised Mr. Fink because of the situation of his mother, and it's our understanding from talking to him that she generally suffers some nerve problems within three weeks to up to three weeks or so after the fireworks because she's worried about the fires and etc. And she is 91 years of age. And we also advise to get a letter from her doctor indicating this, and we also advise him to have his attorney file an injunction against your decision here tonight. Uh, those are the only things that we can advise him on at this point, and uh, we feel that he should strongly do this. Thank you. Thank you. Who else would like to speak? I don't want to talk about fireworks. I want to talk about our neighbors, Nancy. Um, you drive up and down Lakeshore Road every day. Um, what used to be the Frawley House, two doors down. Some lady, the last I knew from Phoenix, owned that. There has been no one living there since sometime last winter. There is all kinds of bags of garbage hanging out of the cellar windows in the backyard, furniture piled up, the lawn hasn't been mowed, and once again, what is our code enforcement doing? I brought up to you last, at last September's meeting that I thought it might be a good idea for you to look into the fact that none of these people came to the meeting so they could answer questions and you were going to look into it. This is now, uh, what is this, June? Thank Nine you. Months. Nine months. Nine uh, months. And still, none of these people come so that you can ask them, what are they doing? This is a health hazard. I frankly don't want rats the size of bunnies in my yard, and I can't believe you do either, Nancy. Can I take that? This is a health hazard when there's bags of garbage that have been sitting there for months and months and months. The grass is probably up to my waist by now. I go by every day. Well, yeah. The house, by the way, is, is up for foreclosure. There's a notice out on the board. Not that house. Not that house. I think it's that house. Uh -huh. We're talking about the brown one, Nancy. Not what's the great one? What's the address? Not, not Lagatella's house. That's already been sold All right. for foreclosure. The there one is the another one. Set. And there's a strange name. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the name of the owner, but it's on the board. We check the address. All right. Why can't code enforcement do something? And why has it been like this since last, was it late last fall, Freddie, that the last time moved out? This no. is ridiculous. David, I'll, I'll, I'll take the action on that. Okay, what, what, what's the address on it? Do you have I can't tell you the number off the top of I mean, my it's, it's on the board. It's from the corner of Halstead. Going towards town. Isn't it? Second, Second one? one east. Second east? Right house east, south side of the road. Directly across the road from the Yeah, it sits right up close to the road. I'll contact the guys tomorrow. We'll ask the, uh, and maybe they've tried to do something that maybe, you know, maybe they are aware of it. Maybe they don't know how to contact the owner because apparently it's a bank. You know, it's in foreclosure. Procedure. The other thing, what is the ruling, Nancy, on when someone puts in an above ground pool, uh, are you required to have a fence around it? Above ground? I if it's above so. ground yeah. pool. If it's, if it's above 48 inches, no, you have to have a retractable ladder. ladder. If it's Locking below grade. that, right. If it's below okay. that, you need a fence. When, Say I come in and I sit, I have to get a permit to put this pool up. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. Do you ask at that time, is it above or below 48 inches? Well, we ask if it's a blue pool. They typically are lower than, or if it's a standard size above ground pool. Yeah, they, they do. And the dimensions. I've heard the post officers ask. The dimensions of the pool. 
So it isn't a requirement if the pool is a standard size pool that they have a fence around it? No, they have, they have the lock and ladder. If it's ground level? Oh, in ground? No, no, ground this level? is above ground. No, but if the ground comes up to halfway or almost to the top of the pool, like they oh, the ground, if, 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 the, if the pool is built into, no, that would be a different situation. No, this is a standard you have size to have from pool. the ground level up 48 inches around the whole perimeter. If a part of that perimeter is not 48 inches, then yes, it's going to be fenced. That's okay. a different situation. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Nancy, who applied for the license for the junk dealership? Mr. Oh, Mr. Boyce. Uh, Richard Boyce. Richard Boyce. Mm -hmm. I like. He's been getting one for years and years. Is this the gentleman on the um, uh, High Hill Road? No. no. This is Weibolt no. Road. Weibolt Road. Okay. Do you have a comment? Yeah, we're gonna tag team this one, Nancy. <laughs> um, first off, Holesville, my name is Jeff Walker, the second assistant, or actually first assistant chief of the Area Center Fire Department. I live on 173 Chief Road in the town of Granby. We just all know me, I'm Shane Laws, <coughs> past chief. Um, I don't live in the town of Granby, but I have been in the fire department for 17 years, so for people that don't know. All right, let's continue on, please. That's what I want to talk about. Um, yeah. First of all, you know, I feel these people, too, they have legitimate concerns, and I, and I understand that. And we're not by any means trying to do something, damage people's property, or be facetious in anything we do. Um, what we've done is we've actually used these fireworks to draw people to our community, to spend their money in our community. That money that we do make is put into rescue equipment that we see by going to your houses, to your wrecks, whatever the situation is. And that's where we put this money to, to use. Um, like I said, it's money that comes from outside the, the, our district, outside the town of Granby, from the people that do um, come to, yeah, frequent our, our field days. And that's where the money goes. Um, and the main reason is, in a, in the main reason the fire department's not just ours, but anyone in any community's community. The reason we have fundraisers is to keep your tax dollars down, is to offset that. Because the money that we raise fundraisers, <coughs> we do buy important equipment with and, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not, I don't know if the, the, the thought out there is that we have this because it's a big party for us. It's not. It's a month's worth of work for the fire department. You know, and we understand that it does put out, you know, with, it, with an instance of the fireworks, it is an inconvenience for some people for 20 minutes. But if for that 20 minutes, we hope that people can oversee that. So I'll see the... And if the burn the shell burns your house, it's a little more than 20 minutes. Well, we've, we've got built-in protections there. You know, and, and again, um, the laws out there, we have a million dollar liability insurance. If the fireworks companies um, mandated to have that by the town board. The fire, the, the fire district has a million dollar liability insurance. So, but with anything, there's a liability. You know, if um, years ago we had somebody fall off a ride, you know, that's a liability to us. You know, so we understand that there's, you know, an inconvenience and we apologize for that. That's why I sent the letter to you, Mr. Frank, in the past, because we knew it was an inconvenience. You would come to us one year before, and I believe my father was the chief, but we could, at that time, we could help you with that situation with you, because you I think you had to go to the racetrack that night, and, and um, your son, guys weren't going, to, weren't going to be around, so we, we would take care of that for you. But in the past, it's bad enough. We don't have enough manpower on the field to, to man the booths to, to raise the money. You know, we've, we've had to go outside outside agencies to bring people in like that. So, you know, again, you know, that's why I sent you the letter in the past. This is the time of the firework. This is when it's going to happen. If you could take those necessary precautions that you feel you need, you know, that's why it was sent that way. We were prepared to come down from the buy off the last four years like I've done. Well, again, you, you know, we, again, we do think of it. And well, like know. we said, it's an inconvenience to you. What we look at is we protect you 365, seven days a week. We're all we're asking is to take care of us for 20 minutes. Can I ask you a question? Uh, then, uh, my old friend Carl Fulci gave $200,000 to the fire department. Uh, 
what do you do with that money? Why do you need the fireworks if Carl Fooch left you $200,000? The fire department, not the fire commissioners, the you firemen. $200,000, now do you need the fireworks and put these people in all this? Do you need, really need the, do you really? $200,000 is a lot of money to be left to you guys. What do you do with that $200,000? The, the commissioner said they have nothing to do with it. Now, uh, do these fireworks mean that much that, that you have to uh, really do this to these people? Really, this is my, wait a minute, Frank, let them answer me. $200,000, what did you do with $200,000? Yeah, but real easy. There's, there's a lot of costs involved running the fire department. I don't think we We, don't we pay you $160,000, $170,000, $150,000 to run the cost? department. We cost. taxpayers pay you 150, 100. Well, I'm a taxpayer. I have to pay for my own protection. Well, what do you people do? You gotta the understand. Money? There's 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 costs involved with, with equipment purchases, and two hundred thousand dollars we can wipe that out with one truck. One truck will wipe that right what out. What do you do with the 160, 170 thousand we taxpayers give you? I don't think it's that much money. 100, 150, 100. Mm -hmm. well, Rosie, we the what? men don't have anything to do with that. What do you do with all this money? What that money, the 160 it's raised for your tax dollars is used to pay for the retirement system. It was passed for, by a public referendum by the people of the town of Gravy. It was, it's used to pay for uh, maintenance on trucks, electricity, uh, the upkeep of the building, insurance. Uh, the boot collection. Uh, and all that. The so that's where the hard the boot excuse me. You made an answer, more on so the boot collection. You made more on the boot collection than you did field days. I was told. Well, so I don't know what you're talking about. You know, all right, I mean, let's I mean, let's not so become I, adversarial. Again, you asked us a question. If you'd let me finish, that's where that money goes. Your tax dollars is used to pay for insurance and maintenance on trucks and new truck equipment. You've never seen the first fire district town of Granby borrow or bond. More money for a fire truck. You just bought a house over on Jenny Kick Lane. No, the men did, yes. Yeah, you, you For were training. training. Yeah. Because we don't have a facility in this area to do it. So the men had an opportunity, when I say the men, excuse me, <coughs> the membership of the fire department yeah. had an opportunity. <laughs> I don't politically correct them. You're sorry. spending, the all, membership you're spending the, all this money buying a house. The, the new, you say oh, the upkeep of the fire department. You're, you're expanding you yourself and buying property. If you let me there? finish. Please, Rose, will you allow him to finish? The, the, the membership bought the house. The reason the house was bought was because we need a place for training. Who owns it? The fire department. The first fire district county grant because ultimately they, mm -hmm. they have to take it over. But More the time. membership bought, paid for it through money that we raised, through fundraisers. So that's it. Don't you think that we, we don't just go out and spend money frivolously. That's stuff that we need to do to partake in training. Money. Okay. May I ask you a question? Yes. I get back on the main main subject, I guess. Is the uh, I have to grant you the first year that you had fireworks, there was a big crowd, okay? And there was a lot of cars that parked over in the church next to me, went down the field. But in the subsequent years, cars come out there and park, watch the fireworks and go home. Have you ever had a, a, a study or, or did any figures on how much really more the fireworks at this point in time do from what you make on the field? It, it does It does show in the numbers and on the field. If people are on the field at the night of the fireworks, yes. And the only thing I can say with fireworks is that look at what it brings for Harbor Fest. Now, I know that shows 100 times bigger than what we have to offer. No. But it does, it does, they do come, you know, some people might not come on the field, but that's with anything. They, they don't do so, you know, I, we've never done a study, but typically the numbers show better on a Saturday night with fireworks Can than I without. Ask a question? Sure. You made a you made a flat statement that the Granby Center Fire Department never borrowed money to buy a truck. You want to stay Not with that, that I can call. I've been in for 17 years and now you've borrowed that. So, huh? You want to stay with that? <coughs> no. But I, okay. my 17 years we haven't. So, okay. Okay. I don't have a question, but I just want to give you a insight on something. You're a fireman in the city, yeah. so you know where they set off the fireworks over the lake. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we look north from where they set the fireworks off to the famous Bullhead Point. Going across the lake is approximately 2,000 feet. Would you say? Okay. Okay. Better part of half a mile. Mm -hmm. For instance, we'd 
seen uh, out of the last 19 years we've been down at nine, uh, full head point. We probably only missed one or two nights, but I can tell you for a fact, one night in particular, the wind was out of the south or the southeast. They fired fireworks off out over the lake. I got hit with some of the fragments from the fireworks at Bullhead Point. If I tell you this, so you know just how far this stuff goes, it travels, oh, I especially with the wind. Yeah. And now the people, one kid, if I'm not mistaken, got it in the eye down there. Who was there, taken to the hospital for it? So now you're talking about doing this all in close proximity to the houses and businesses. This is out over the open water, right. a good 2,000 feet away from people, and an accident still happened. Well, Fred, you know, all I can tell you is you're, accidents, you're right, exactly it. Accidents do happen. I mean, the city take, of Fulton went out of their way to try to get this car away from everybody. They even have the road precautions as we can. And I guess the thing that bothered me, I guess, Mark, you made a statement that you know, you had some, some part of it laughed at. Yes, they did. I'd like to really know who their names are. Well, another, another, another thing that really, really bothers me the most about another situation, and it kind of comes up to this, is the day that Mr. Fink had an issue with his college in the water. I was at the firehouse. I volunteered my time, and I felt right, get get down there to get his college in the water. Next thing I know, and I could be wrong, Larry, on this, okay, it, it's hearsay, it's what I'm told from somebody else. But you came here and presented yourself and said, oh, Mr. Wood was a flight gentleman, but that other guy was rude and obnoxious. I think I asked, I came over and asked you one question. I said, Larry, I said, do you realize what that water supply is for the community? It protects our community. And you didn't, and you just, all oh, you went off by your college. I just turned, away, turned around and walked away. But yeah, I was, I guess yeah. I didn't realize what, uh, yeah, you said, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was for trade, it's a but, but they had nothing to do with me. I volunteered my time to come down there and give your cows water. I was on that. I was on that tanker. I thought that was the right thing to do, and I sided with you on that. That was wrong. Well, I already put a tank out there, which you drank for. Well, right. I understand that, but my whole point here is, is it was sat here and said that, that I was a bad guy. And I don't remember being no, I didn't come out saying malicious. Was a bad guy. Anything I said to you, I just asked you, do you understand the importance of that water supply? Very helpful, and, and I thought. He well, I was coming across that as malicious. I don't remember saying anything to this malicious. Okay, well, we but don't want anyway, to get into but, a but personal but he right, said, but she but said. Like I said, I just, I just think people need to understand we stay to the topic, that, that we understand the issues they have. And I wish we had enough manpower that we could do other fundraisers, but we're always constantly looking for something to bring money into our community. Right. And that money comes from people that come to, to watch our fireworks. Jeff, you know what? I've been on the corners 37 years, and, and I remember all the old firemen, after a field day, you get the Boy Scouts and everybody, yep. go up and, and clean up the garbage along the, the parade. Uh, uh, there's nothing like that anymore. No. And why is that, Rose? Why you, you young kids. Young? Yeah. There's, we don't have, there's no more Boy Scout troop. Am I wrong in that? Is there a troop still in the there's church? There's troops all, all around. Right? So, I mean, so there's no more Boy Scout troops in the town of Grammy. I'm not 100% on that, but, you know, they've never approached us again. There's nothing like together. the old time fire. The old time, how many, Mr. Fox, how many members were in standing when I was growing up 17 years ago or 30 years ago? How many members were active then? 50, 60, 70, 80 no. guys on a roster? No. How many at the most? There, there may be that many on the roster, but maybe there was uh, 34, 30 active. Maybe, maybe. We don't have that now. Where, where, where they you know, and again, you know, we try to we try to be good neighbors, and again, we we why, understand. Why, why don't you have that? Jim? What the good the numbers? No. I don't know. I don't know. Because people, because it's it's not just here. It's oh, throughout the volunteer fire service because volunteer period. Volunteer period. That's why we have to do things like in sign up programs. Um, you do whatever you can to keep people there. It's very tough. There's people that have to work jobs. There's a lot of people that have to work two jobs. Now. You know, things Gardner are made things changed an awful lot. He made a comment he couldn't come to the meeting because he's got a job. Well, almost everybody's got a job. They can't, you know, they can't make those things. No, you know, and you can't, you know, call. You know what it takes to put it in. And it's now 100 times worse than what it used to be. The so, volume is totally different than what it used to be back 20, 30 years ago. The training's become a real issue. The training? Yeah. yeah but, but, I guess my whole point for getting up here is we don't want... We don't want all feelings. I mean, if you've got issues against the fireworks, that's fine. I don't take it personal. It's not against me. It's it's against the issue of fireworks, and I understand that. 
I don't take it personal. And I hope you don't take our side personal. We're trying to be good neighbors. We're just doing whatever it does to bring money in so we can spend money on protecting our community. That's our main concern. Well, I, I'd like I to ask a question, please. I think the whole thing is the perception of, of uh, if these people have debris issues and cleanup and everything afterwards, isn't there any way you could work out something with them so that someone could go and clean the debris up? Because I don't really think they should have to do that either. Well, that's something we can look into. I can't, I, I can't sit here and guarantee anything. Like I said, we have a hard yeah. time cleaning up even our own field because it takes us a week to get our firehouse back in, in a month to get our firehouse back in order. Land, Harold Babcock. Pardon? Who owns the land back there, Harold Babcock? He's our code enforcer. Should he? Shouldn't he tell us how big his land is? He's our code enforcer. Well, you're the wrong guy. I'm just here as representative of the fire department to tell you this is why we're doing it. This is our, you know. I don't have any thing, you know. I don't know either. Yeah, you know, you I have a question for you because you made this statement last year. How much money did you make off the field? I'm the field day chairman, so I can't answer that question. Well, the next question is, what did you buy with that money? All that money gets put into different funds that we have and we use for different functions. Wait a minute, you just made the statement that, we buy that the field days is to buy equipment so nope. the taxpayers don't have to buy equipment. I just equipment. bought a brand new module tool this last year for our new rescue. Did the money out of the field days go for that? Oh, it always goes for that. And I don't know, like I said, our field days cost us a lot of money. We put bicycles for kids, things like that. Uh, that money that money gets spent. Pardon? The bicycles, bicycles are donated because I was asked to some donate Some of them are, couple. yes. And we've actually been buying some. We did go out uh, the first year and all the bicycles. $10 and $15 a week. Yeah. All right, I think this discussion is kind of getting... I have a question. Um, being in the fire department and stuff and seeing other communities, what other communities do in the town board meetings, I think it's an excellent idea that you come to the board meeting tonight, and what would you think about having a report at every meeting so people are more informed of what department, fire department has for how many fire calls that they go out on, emergency calls, we have town about we have a town Right on. Not on is, uh, uh, town of Valney has a different situation. We we do not we do not have the same situation here. We do not. The fire department is independent of us. We do not. They're a different situation. That's what you want to do. If you want to look at our call numbers and stuff like that, you can go on our website. It's just that I think it's very important. I understand your thing. I understand your comment. Informing people. Unfortunately, and I've heard comments about this, but the night, the first fire district's uh, commissioner's meeting is the second Wednesday of the month, and unfortunately it's the same night as yeah. the town board meeting. So, you know, party party. people that, if they're interested in that, can go to that meeting. If that's something that the supervisor, I don't think the district or the fire chief, the president of the fire chief, we don't have anything to hide. If you want to see those numbers, if that's something, just come to us. I think I don't. It's just a computer swipe key away. Print it out, and if they want to bring it up and just to say that what Cody and Grammy do I see every month, the other it's not a big deal. Said, it's a new thing that's coming up. Right. All the other fire departments right. in uh, Washington Road, they're going to their town yeah. hall to let the town know what's going on and with their fire that's, department. That's something that the supervisor we, uh, could probably work out with the district and the chief. Again, it's not that big a deal. I I know what she's saying. It's, it's just a thought I had. Yep. It's not a problem. Now, wouldn't it be just as easy now for you guys at the fire department to take the preceding month's report and have our supervisor for the town of Granby read it out to us? So we're a month behind. Now, wait a minute. The mission is being accomplished. You are an entity of the town of Granby. Am I right? I don't know, Fred. I, well, think, I know that I know that this has been brought up before. We are not. not they the are not and I don't under know, the control of the town. Right, and I don't know what the answer because I don't know town law. So, so I mean, there's that's nothing for you to lose. lose. It's just the tax money comes out of the town to pay you. With there's that. nothing that, for you to lose. Time. Well, wise. first of all, it's not a lot of the town. It's a fire tax here. You know, it's a fire tax. And I pay my fire tax too, and I get to see my dollars. Filing fire tax, and it's just. It's just a uh, 
informing them being informing the public with their tax dollars. So you know why they're doing that? Because they have an issue. They can think about that whole issue right. going on. They had an issue with somebody. The town board doesn't want to get involved with the fire department. I don't think that's true. That is true. I don't think it's true. The well, fire because the town of Valley, for instance, you brought up Valley. The thing with Valley is they contract with the, the town. Valley Volunteer Fire Corporation contracts with the town of Valley. Now, there's nothing saying that. Uh, Johnny Smith Fire Department, who just comes down the street and wants the contract with the town of Valley now, can do that. It's a contract. Like like you talked about state bid. If a guy comes in and wants to underbid them, and the town can say, we're going to go with this guy. What's the difference between you and Valley? We're we kind of getting district. off track now. We are. It is. It's, it's yeah, yeah, they're a fire district. They're incorporated. They're, they're two separate entities. And I can't give you the specifics without the things, but... Years ago, my understanding was that the fire district and a corporation, the corporation owns everything. So if you if you wanted to if Valley wanted to liquidate and quit, they could sell all their equipment and just take the money and leave. Okay, basically, you people wanted to go like Valley's going to corporate that. You couldn't do it without these people because in reality, the town owns your equipment. The building and everything. Not these today. people. The, the, five, the five fire commissioners. Yeah, the fire because they are the ones that oversee in the end. That. If, they, if they disbanded, it would go back to the town of Grammy. Okay. I'm no fire lawyer, but I know that uh, it's the fire com the fire, fire commissioners, commissioners who. They got five of them. It's just like the town board here. So. We do not. Okay. Is it pertinent? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, I think it is. One more. Uh, Rosie asked a little while ago, and neither you nor Jeff answered the question, the money that Carl left you, which was a substantial amount of money, what has that been used for, or what is it going to be used for? Right now, $150,000 is placed in CDs, and basically what we're going to do is the money will be drawn out that or we're in the process of putting together, uh, I think CD. they're talking about a scholarship program for, like, the, for like kids. In Carl's um, name, I hope. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, Carl's very supportive of the fire department. Yes, I know he and, You know, that's a substantial amount of money to be left. Um, we just purchased a squad, which can be used for, in case we need it for traffic, um, during the ice storm. We had, we had, you know, training, motor training classes during the ice storm. I mean, we used our own vehicles and now we're cleaning up the town roads. Mm -hmm. I spent 16 hours, I mean, I, I found out sleep deprivation. I spent three days out there cleaning the roads so the people of town of Granby could get where they had to go. I spent a lot of time. Well, some of that money was, some of that area. was used to buy the house and the upkeep and to bring that up to what we need for training. Again, training is expensive. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it, you know, again, if guys are willing to, to train, we got to give them what they need to train with. I'm and, not arguing and, and that, that change. But this is where the, that's where this money has been going. But this you know, comes back if, to, I think, was it you that said it, Freddie, uh, that if you gave a monthly report, it would be in your own best interest. There would not be contro controversy. Well, I think there would be any suspicion, you might say, if you want to use for lack of words. I said controversy. Oh, I understand what you're saying. So the people know where what's coming in and what's going out. It'd be no different than the town of Granby explaining what, where their money's going, where it's coming from. It's to your own best interest. You want to be the do better for the community, right? And that's what we try for, and that's why we're here to, to say, you know, I'm not even saying that the fireworks aren't going to pose inconveniences. No, you came here for fireworks, but, I guess but, you're saying but, but, you know, what, nobody asked me how it was an inconvenience for me for the three days that I spent cutting wood out of the roads, which, you know, helped out the town, helped out the community. It's just something that I volunteered to do. It's since time that I'm willing to put forward out of my schedule to this community. And that's all I'm here for, the community. I'm not here for a social club. I'm not here for anything else. You know, but this what is we're part asking, of being a volunteer is fireman, too, isn't it, Jeffrey? Well, it is. It is. My own dad it was a, a fireman it is, for 20 years, and he did these things all the time. Hey, Jeff, are you the gentleman that came to Rosie's the during the ice storm? Did I come to with Cardwell? I don't know. I don't think I got up there. No, I know. Yes, you did. Okay. I didn't come up. No, you, no I sent some guys up there. Okay. You, you sent... 
You fine. came down and got it's some samples. Fine, fine, it's fine, it's okay. Just forget You it. know, Jeff, but in reality, fire insurance, they, they volunteer and all that. But so don't a lot of other people that do not belong in the fire department, especially during the ice storm. I was up, I was cutting the trees out of the road, too. Oh, yeah, we had homeowners were out. And I don't belong to the fire department. Right. And, right. and, and we're not trying to take that away from anybody in the community because we know that there's other positions in the town that the people volunteer their time for. All we're saying is that, you know, there's a lot of time. Go to the website, look at it, look at the training hours, look at the volume of calls we're running. You know, it's all there. You know, Shane, it there. sounds good. Go to the website. It's wonderful. But we still go back to where it would be a better idea if you presented a monthly report to Nancy that Nancy and or one of the town board members can what I, read. What I can do is, because the district's meeting tonight, and I know their meeting isn't over with. When I go back, and I'm, I'm just a fireman now, I'm not, I have no power down there anymore. I'm not a chief. It should come from Jeff. We can go back and suggest that to the fire district. Look, the town people would like some, in, or they would like some information from the board. Can we do that? So I if, for if, one, if that's their decision. I can't I can't give you an answer on that because I don't have that power. I am aware of that. But I for one am totally illiterate on the computer. Okay. I a lot of people don't have it. I understand that. We so. have a computer, Fred is very good with it. It frightens me more. We can we can take that back to the Jeff can take it back. We Jeff Jeff can take it back to the okay. I think it boils down to one thing. Accountability. Well, uh, right, Fred, but we're talking about accountability. We're talking about fireworks. Right. The fireworks. Well, you're seeing the fireworks right now. What, I, what I'm saying is that you know, we're just asking for the community to, to just bear with us for 20 minutes that it takes. No, I don't think it's the community. I think it's the people in the immediate vicinity of the fireworks. You know, my Fred, you, 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 ought, you ought to see what my dog does in my house when it thunderstorms. I mean, the fireworks go off. I have to have somebody at home yeah, because she will, do about, about she will, do she will tear the house apart. She does it during the fireworks. She does it when Fulton sets off their fireworks. Yeah, the firestorm has nothing you can do about that. You know? Fireworks. Oh, that's Mother Nature. Are we, uh, just a, yeah, just a quick comment. So we have, we have when you were to say something, if the only thing I've heard here so far is that the
I was 12 years old and I saw the fireworks, or not the fireworks, but the field days going on. And that Monday night after the weekend, there was a truck that came down Old County Route 3 and just picked up every piece of paper and everything. I mean, I never saw such a sensitivity and such a service in my life. And I'm just trying to bring a simple thing to your conscience that there's agricultural in the area, there's farm animals that just go wild. And I don't want those things to go, I'm not going to put them in this year, but if they go through the fence list, it's going to have to go back under that bond issue. They can be anxious to the neighbor's lawns and stuff. And all I'm asking is, I'd like to see you just put this up after yourself. It's showing the sunset. Right, Larry, I don't want you I mean, to think that, that we're insensitive to your feelings. I don't like, you know, like I said, I mean, this is just Mark me. and I. Let me understand. I want you to understand this. It's just like Mark and I. I've had neighbors talk to me. They just won't come forth to stand on their two feet. Mm -hmm. And all I'm trying to do is I presented to the town board back in November. I'm coming to the town board because I'm trying to make a, a negative into a positive, which we can build a relationship and a good positive for the town of That's all I'm asking. That's right, Larry. The day is I showed up, you were, you were, you were very irate. Oh, no, you were. You were very irate the day that I showed up. Water, I, and I, I, had, and, I have to make that reactive spot for you and your animals. I, I we had a little bit there. of anger, but I have to admit that it was after four and a half days of no water coming down to sure. that creek to feed my yeah. house. I but think they that drink 30 uh, gallons of water uh, per animal. I understand. And that's, that's why I was there. The very next morning, I got to tank out there and they drank 400 gallons of water within 20 minutes. That's why I was there, Larry, because I was... I know, you were doing a job, and I'm not saying the fire department is wrong in what you're trying to do, and as far as <coughs> preventing fires like that, I commend you for that. All I'm simply saying is, you know, be polite, and let's have a sensitivity to this thing. I thought I was. I was well, there. I, I, I tried well, to hopefully that, that this dialogue is, has, has led to some some good thoughts about, and you kind of mentioned it well, about getting to know each other better and understanding each other better. And that's why I kind of let you go, but uh, I appreciate you coming and, and your perspective and you coming and uh, everyone else who spoke on this. Did you, very you find have one more comment? Yeah, I just would like to say that if anybody's interested in the commissioner's meetings, there's a second Wednesday of the month at 6 o'clock. I know Cody's at 6, so I'm not sure. You're at 7.30? Granby's at 7.30, yours is at the firehouse, yes, yes. and ours is at Station 1 on 55. So if you're interested in going to the commissioner's meetings, Cody's at 6 o'clock, and Granby's is, is at 7.30. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Have, right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just appreciate you know, the, the residents' time here, and, and like I said, I just, you know, we just don't want people to think that we just have this idea that we're going to do what we want when we want, and there's a lot of thought that gets put in. And there's, things that we think about before we do things in the community by far most is, is the number one thing. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry to inconvenience to some people and then we'll try to do what we can to make it better and that's, you know, going forward that's all we can do. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Both of you.